All right, so let's walk through a quick demonstration of how easy it is to get started um, password spraying. It's something that's super commonplace, um, used by adversaries all the time, and it's pretty much the gift that keeps on giving until either we figure out how to ditch the password or um, people set super complex passwords and no one ever has a breach. <laughs> um, in this instance, we're going to spray um, Office, Office 365, um, which is really simple thanks to an awesome tool written by a guy named Bo who works at Black Hills Information Security. And the tool is called MSOL Spray. Uh, what MSOL Spray lets you do is essentially spray passwords against a user list um, and try to authenticate to them um, over Office 365. Um, installation is super simple. You can just grab a copy using wgit off of GitHub. I will do that quickly. And you can see that it is now in our local directory um, set to msolspray.ps1. I've also constructed a little users file just with some default templated users, I should say. These don't actually exist. That domain doesn't actually exist. So this is purely for demonstration purposes. We will not, unfortunately, as, as fun as it may be, we will not be um, live password spraying external targets. <laughs> uh, next, you simply just need to import the module into your PowerShell session. So we can do that quickly. And now we are good to go ahead and perform a quick password spraying attack. So what command or the command you run is invoke dash MSL spray, and then you can give it a user list, which is our list of users up here. And then it takes an argument of a password. So a singular password that you want to spray across each one of these uh, usernames. Um, and it will perform a single authentication attempt for each one of these users. So let's go ahead and hit enter and see what our output looks like. So there's a decent amount of information to note. Um, you've got a total list of targets, the notification that you're spraying Microsoft online, current date and time, and then a suite of errors since these identities don't actually exist. So this is expected. Um, this example just simply was put together to demonstrate how within a minute you can start spraying passwords against Microsoft services and trying to authenticate as users. So what you can do is uh, in your head <laughs> can elaborate, right? Um, and think about if you're an attacker, right? Um, generally what we see occur is attackers will get lists of usernames or emails from sites like LinkedIn or maybe um, data brokers, maybe even like uh, corporate marketing websites, right, that have data on other organizations. And then they'll take those lists and start password spraying over a period of time. So targeting weak passwords like, you know, seasonal year with maybe one special character, targeting passwords that are um, tied to a company. So like company name one, exclamation point, so on and so forth. And this is typically something that is pursued during the initial stages of a adversary, whether it's like an APT or a ransomware group targeting an organization. So we had a quick demonstration on spraying passwords externally. Let's shift gears a little bit and say that we're an adversary inside a network environment. So we have successfully breached the perimeter. We have a consistent network connection and our targets running Active Directory. Um, which is extremely common, right? Um, we want to spray passwords against a series of usernames that we've enumerated inside the environment we're in. And we actually, at this point, have almost too many tools to choose from. So there are uh, a wide range of options at this point, and a lot of adversaries will even just run quick PowerShell scripts to perform some of the spraying activity. Um, from our perspective at Renegade Labs and RISC360, we like to generally use a tool called Talon, which was written by a guy named Tylus, who is over at Optiv. It's a really sweet tool um, written in Golang that essentially allows you as an operator to have a lot of flexibility on how you want to spray an environment. So internally and externally, of course, you're always wanting to be mindful of lockout controls, right? So. Maybe there's a password policy that's very stringent where you really only want to have one attempt shoot off um, maybe every like two hours. Or maybe there's a environment that has a much less stringent password policy and you can um, 
perform three authentication attempts every 30 minutes without really risking locking anybody out. Um, Talon's great because it gives you the flexibility to be able to configure that, which I really, really enjoy. And it's also super simple to install. So you can actually just grab a copy from GitHub, which I will do quickly. And then what we can do is make that executable and we'll just rename it to Talon for simplicity's sake. So now if we list our directory, you can see we have this Talon binary. And then I've also gone ahead and created this file called users.txt. And that just has our same users from the external steps, but this time again, we're inside the network, right? So we've, we've reached the perimeter. Getting started spraying with Talon is also super simple. So what we can do is pass it a couple different arguments. I'll start by just syncing my local time with the domain controller that we're gonna target. And then we should be able to simply start spraying. There we go, start spraying password attempts. So I had to do that pretty quickly just to keep in sync with the domain controller. So sorry, not super elegant, but what you can see out of this output is that we just issued a authentication attempt against every single one of those identities with this password that we specified with the dash P argument. Um, and we found that Bob does possess this password no surprise there. It's probably intended in the demo, right? Um, but what that allows us to do is now authenticate as Bob, right? And so we can inherit his privileges, use these in further exploitation attempts, and perform additional exploitation within the environment, all thanks to some low and slow password spraying performed with this tool. So what we can do quickly is just extrapolate on this mentally, right? So let's say that you are an adversary and you have a long-standing access within an environment um, that's you know been going on for like two months, right? Um, that's where this is super potent um, because um, let's say you're really careful and you're only doing one password spray attempt um, a day even, right? And you have persistent access that's lasted for months, you have a user list, you're taking your time. That's where attacks like this are very interesting, right? Because you can go through your list of passwords, slowly iterate through, um, maybe gather other evidence um, on the environment from like breach data to maybe indicate what kind of passwords are in use. And eventually um, there is a very high likelihood that you're going to have that perfect combination of the right password matching up with the list of users um, that you have for the environment. So this is a really cool attack vector from an adversary's perspective. And that's why we should talk about mitigation because mitigating this attack is, um, it can be dependent on the application, right? So like Azure has conditional access policies and then there's MFA, but realistically the first and foremost remediation for any password spraying blog is always going to be password strength, right? Like it, it just, it's kind of a no brainer. Um, password policies matter. They will last the test of time until we completely get rid of the password and enforcing a high complexity, high character password policy is adamant. It's uh, the <laughs> most direct way to remediate and or mitigate, I should say, an attack vector like this. So think if you're an attacker and think about the added complexity with each character, right? Um, if I'm sitting here and I'm trying to generate a word list to use with Talon, right? Every single character that's added to that just makes my life that much more difficult. Secondary, uh, secondary to that, of course, is MFA. So especially from an external perspective, enforcing MFA is great. It really, really makes an attacker's life more difficult because you have to pursue phishing or um, other custom, maybe more social engineering based tactics to get around that. Um, so in combination with strong passwords, it's really great. Um, the issue with internal networks though, is that um, MFA isn't necessarily something that's you can just ship out of the box, right? Um, especially within environments that are using Windows and Active Directory, there are many, many ways to authenticate to resources, which means there's many, many ways to technically password spray. And getting MFA to work out of, out of the box is uh, not something that I've ever seen completely implemented, right, across every single protocol 
internally inside of a network. There's just too much noise. So that's why the the mitigation for any password spraying should always be a password complexity first and foremost. But with that said, thanks for watching. This is just a quick demo on external and internal password spraying to hopefully give a short glimpse into what it looks like from an operator's perspective and also an adversary's perspective. Uh, if you have any questions on penetration testing, red teaming, or anything uh, related to the intricacies discussed in this video, feel free to hit us up at Risk360. We'll be happy to help.